Hello everyone, welcome to another video and this time it's on the topic of net present value. Now net present value is an extremely important concept that any investor needs to understand before they put money into the stock market. And in this video we will walk through how to quantitatively think about and calculate the net present value. The official definition of net present value is that it is the value in the present of a sum of money in contrast to some future value it will have when it has been invested at compound interest. Now what does this mean? It's actually easier to think of it in terms of a number and the example here is that $110 due in 12 months time has a present value of $100 today if invested at an annual rate of 10%. Or in other words, if someone were to tell you that they would give you $100 today or $100 a year from now, you should take $100 today because you could go ahead and invest that, that $100 at an interest rate of 10% and you will have $100 next year. So you see the net present value takes into account this important concept of the time value of money. That is, that given a certain required rate of return that fits the scenario that you are thinking about, money has a time value associated with it. That is, money is worth more to me today than it will be in the future because I can take the money today and invest it at some rate of return, whether it be a savings account or the stock market. Now the same concept of net present value also applies to companies and projects. For example, let's say you are a company and you expect to make $20 in year one, which could be next year, and two years from today you expect to make $35, and three years from today you expect to make $55, and 60 four years from now and $75 five years from now. You could be asking yourself what is the value of all this future cash flows in today's money? This $75 that you will get five years from now is not worth $75 today. It is worth less than that and that's because of the time value of money. So what exactly is the time value of money? There are several ways you could name it. Sometimes it's called the required rate of return or the interest rate or the discount rate. However, what all these terminologies are taking into account is the fact that there is a relationship between time and money. In this example, we're going to say that the required rate of return is 8%. Given this rate of return, as a company that expects this future cash flow, you could be asking, what is that money worth to me now? And to calculate that, it's now important to understand how net present value is actually calculated. This is the formula that defines the relationship between future cash flows, the time, and the discount rate, or the required rate. And the formula goes like this. The NPV, or the net present value, is equal to the net cash flow at time t, divided by 1 plus the discount rate or interest rate or the required rate raised to the power t which is the time of that cash flow. So in our case for example the net present value of this $35 in year 2 is going to be 35 divided by 1 plus 0 0.08 assuming an 8% rate of return raised to the power of 2 because it's in the second year. So we can go ahead and calculate NPV as this. NPV is equal to year one divided by one plus required rate raised to the power one because that's year one. Similarly, we can fill in the rest of the years following the same trend. For example, year three is divided by one plus the required rate raised to the power three. And we can print this NPV value and find out what that is. We see that this NPV value is 187, 
which is less than the sum of all these future cash flows. If you were to sum all these five years, you get 245. But because of the relationship between time and money, this $75 is worth less to me now, and this $60 is worth less to me now. So the net present value captures the value of future cash flows in today's dollars. Similarly, if you were a project manager, you could be asking yourself whether or not to invest in a particular project based on what you expect the future returns to be. So in year one, if you assume you're going to make $20, 35, 55, 60, and 75 afterwards, you need to calculate whether your initial investment into that project will return a profit or not. And the way you do that is that you define what your initial investment will be. And let's assume for the purposes of this example that will be $150. What you can do in this net present value calculation is subtract that initial investment. And this gives you the amount of profit that you expect from this investment into this project over this five-year period. And we see that we expect to make overall $37 based on today's value of money and today's initial investment of $150. So therefore, we should go ahead and make this investment. However, if this initial investment was $200, we expect to make negative $12 or $13 in today's money. Therefore, we should not go ahead and invest in this project based on this negative value. So far, we've talked about the net present value in terms of a future cash flow and what that means in today's money. In the grand scheme of things, the stock market operates in the same way. The stock market takes in all the information that is available today about the future market and gives it a price today. So the stock market is the ultimate discounting machine. It is constantly discounting what the expectation of future cash flows are in the economy and giving it a price today. Over the long run, the market does a very good job of approximating what the current value of all future cash flows in the economy is. However, in the short run, the market can be irrational. It can be overly optimistic, or it can underestimate the future. This corresponds to the buying and selling opportunities that we observe. If we believe that the current stock prices are underestimating the future value, then we should buy. If we assume, on the other hand, that the stock market is overvalued, that it is overly optimistic about what the future holds, then we could, then we could consider selling some of our investments. Now, there is another very important consideration for the net present value, which is related to the intrinsic value of a current stock or a current company. In a future video, we will learn how to find the intrinsic value of a stock based on its historic cash flow. One approach to finding what the right price of a stock is, is to take its recent free cash flow and project it a few years into the future and then discount that. If we assume a company is going to grow at a rate of let's say 3 or 4%, we can find what the net, what the intrinsic value of that stock should be today based on our projected rate of return in the future. And this is at the core of Warren Buffett's concept of value investing, that you calculate an intrinsic value of a stock using some discount rate or a required rate of return, and then you watch for a buying opportunity. When the stock dips below that value, you can go ahead and buy it. In conclusion, the net present value is an extremely important concept that relates to stocks, investments, projects, as well as how one should think about the rationality of the markets and whether there is a buying opportunity or not. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful and if so, please consider dropping a like or subscribing as it would really help out the channel going forward. Thank you all and see you in the next video.